Hello. In this video, we are going to solve transportation problems using linear programming. The setup here is we have three sources. In this case, could be as many as you want, and then four destinations that we need to send things to. Obviously, these sources and these destinations would be all over um, a map, literally, but it's just easier if we draw them where we have the origins on the left and the sources on the right. And then the numbers represent the demands for the customers on the right and the supply for the suppliers on the left. And let's pretend that those numbers represent the number of truckloads that we need to send. So we need to figure out how many truckloads from A to D and A to E and A to F, et cetera. And so we're gonna to need to keep track of exactly how many go from each location to each destination because the cost to go from A to D is not going to be the cost, the same cost as going from B to D. So we have to keep track of the amount from each origin to each destination so we can know what the total costs will, will be. We need to make sure that each destination is getting at least as many units as what it needs. And we need to make sure that each origin is not asked to send out more units than it has available. If you like algebra, have I got a deal for you. If you do not like algebra, have I got a deal for you. We're going to quickly talk about the algebraic formulation here, and then we're going to get straight to the formulation in Excel, which I think is just a lot easier to approach, but I feel obligated to write it out as a formal linear program. Like I said before, we need to keep track of the total number of units from each source to each destination. We will do that with XIJ, where the I refers to where it's coming from, and the J refers to where it's going to. And then we need to pair that up with the cost going from each origin to each destination. So we will take those, the number of shipments from every, for each combination, multiply it by the costs, and that will be the total cost of our solution, which we are of course trying to minimize. We need to know the amount of demand that we have to satisfy, and then we need to know the amount of supply that is available. So when we write it out like this, it's ugly, but, but this is doable. So we are summing from all origins to all destinations, we're taking the costs of that shipment times the number of shipments. And then we just need to make sure that the total number being um, sent out of an origin does not exceed the amount available there. And that the amount being sent into a location is enough to satisfy the demand. And then lastly, at the bottom there, these quantities all are restricted to non-negative answers. Okay. Friendlier now. In Excel, we need a table that shows all the costs from every source to every destination. So we are going from T and M and S to A, B, C, and D. And those are the costs that we're going to use. The place to start in Excel then would be to make a little block or matrix if you want to be fancy or array, whatever you want to call it, a block of cells that has all those costs in it. And then below it in yellow, is where I'm going to keep track of the decision variables. My candidate solution so far as to how many go from each source to each destination. So um, that the, the gray on the top, those are my costs, C-I-J. And then down below in the yellow, those are the X's, the X-I-J. Um, I need constraints. So if you look across here, let me see if my pointer is going to work. Sometimes it does, sometimes. We'll look with the laser pointer. Um, the amount that we ship from T to A and T to B and T to C and T to D, that total amount we ship out cannot exceed what T has available. Similarly, for each of the other rows. So we can just use sum and just sum up those shipments. Then we also, so that takes care of our supply constraints here in the red. And then for our demand constraints, the amount that we ship from T to A plus T M to A plus S to A goes that up to 30. And in the final answer, those are supposed to be greater than or equal to 180. Obviously, our current tentative solution is not a feasible solution to the linear program because we're not satisfying all of the customer demands. Um, so when we have those written out, that's what it looks like when I take away the formulas. Um, and then lastly, we need the cost function that we are trying to minimize here. And there's just no way to do this without using my favorite function, sum product. And what sum product does, if you don't know it, you should. It's my favorite formula. 
in these two blocks, the blue and the red, it just takes the first number in the blue times the first number in the red and gives us the product of those. And then it takes the products of the next two, and the next two, and the next two, and it sums those all up and it gives us exactly what we want, which is the cost of this current solution, which again, is not feasible. So what we've set up so far is we've made this matrix of the shipment costs and a matrix of the decision variables. And we just figured out the total cost using some product. We set up a constraint to make sure each destination gets at least as much as it needs. And we set up a constraint to make sure each source is not asked to ship out more units than it has available. And uh, so here's our solution so far. And now let's get into solver. So click on data and then click on solver. Um, and our objective is to minimize that total cost function that we just saw. And then we've told it the variable cells, the, the block of yellow there. And then we've told it the constraints that we have to have at least enough to meet the demand and we cannot exceed the supply. And then we click the box here for non-negativity and we click simplex LP and we click solve and we get an answer. The original answer I had here was 150,000 and the optimal answer is 88,000. So a significant savings. Um, so then it tells us how many units should be shipped from T to A, which is zero. T to B is zero. T to C, 40 units. T to D, 110 units, etc. cetera. Uh, then if we look at our constraints here, we have A, B, C, and D, the amount that have to go to each customer. Uh, and those amounts uh, are all binding. We have just barely met those constraints. And then we have T and M and S and um, Two of them are uh, binding, but S is not. S has not shipped out everything it had available. If we look at the sensitivity report, um, we can see that from T to A, the cost is 50. And if this 50 were to increase, the final answer here was zero units to ship. So you could increase this cost as much as you want and it wouldn't affect the answer. I don't, want to, I don't want to use any of that and you can raise the price as much as you want and I'm still not gonna to want to use any of that. So that makes sense. But if we decrease the six from six and we decrease it down to zero, then the answer about how much to ship from where to where would change. Um, so similarly here, like the amount from T to C, uh, we're using 40 units right now um, at the cost is 76 per unit. If that 76 were to increase by six units and go to 82, then all bets are off and we would have to just change the parameters and rerun the linear program. Similarly, if we decreased the 76, decrease it by 34, so down to 42 or less, we'd have to resolve the linear program. Looking at the constraints, um, we see how many uh, units we're sending to each location and we see how many units we have sent from each location. Uh, and um, we can see the shadow price here tells us uh, if we were to um, require more of this, how much cost would go up. Uh, and if we were to have more available on the constraints on the, uh, of the sources, if we, so for some of those, it's negative. If we had, because right now we're shipping out everything from T, if we had more available from T, we could use T instead of M and that would save us money. So for every additional unit we gain at T, costs would go down by that amount within, uh, as long as we were not increasing it by more than this or decreasing it by less than that. So uh, to recap what we've done here, we have written out the linear program in uh, mathematical notation, and then we set it up in solver. Uh, and uh, we minimized costs and we looked at the answer report and the sensitivity report. I hope this has been helpful.